Today we're talking about the Fujifilm X-Row Studio that has just been released some days ago by Fujifilm. Why we should use it, uh, what can be useful and what it is for. A lot of Fujifilm photographers know that, uh, or maybe they probably had some problems when developing the RAW file. Fujifilm is really famous for the film simulation, you know, like digital camera as inside now, simulation to get almost the same color as the analog film, iconic analog film as Velvia, Provia, Astia and many more. That's even inside the simulation to get the uh, look uh, of the Kodachrome, in this case called Classic Chrome. But uh, when shooting with the Fujifilm camera in JPEG, you get really beautiful colors. And a lot of the time, you know, there are some photographers that say, yeah, I just want to shoot in JPEG because my colors are perfect, I don't need to do any edit, that's it. Honestly, there are a lot of pro photographers and I am one of those which should always in row because it gives you a really more room for editing the photos and you have really at the end the perfect control on your file because you can decide if to change like the color temperature, you can recover highlights, you can open up the shadow, so you have a lot of controls. The problem was that in these years, honestly, the support about uh, X-Trans files produced by Fujifilm was not so amazing by Adobe and Phase One. So if you notice on the details of the Lightroom files, you can notice a bit of like uh, watercolor-like effect. So it's not so perfect. A lot of users then say, yeah, it's not the kind of uh, result you get when you shoot with the JPEG files out of Fujifilm. So Fujifilm created then this software, this X-Row Studio, that try to address this problem. So mainly use the same power of the camera using your computer to get the same quality. It works in this way, you just connect your camera with the computer using a USB cable and then you use your camera as the processor power. So it will use the same algorithm and the same processor of your camera to develop the raw file. So the question is, are we going to have a really nice software? Are we going to have something that uh, is going to replace Lightroom? Let's go to check it out. So here we are. First things, where to download the Fujifilm X-Row Studio? There's just a page on the official fujifilmx.com I will put the link down in the description and here you can download I want to remember that it is for free so it's just free uh, software you just go in download somewhere Mac version yes here then uh, blah 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 you just uh, begin okay thanks uh, begin to download and it's downloading okay I have already installed uh, and it's here okay I want to show you my selection of photos I did in Lightroom. So, first things really important to mention is just that the X-Row Studio is a software that doesn't have a way to select photos. So you cannot put star, you cannot put anything. So you have to do these things before in Lightroom. So I select this uh, uh, four, eight photos I shoot this weekend with this check model that's called Barbara here in Florence and I just applied the, the Astia color profile that is the one that I'm using almost all the time okay and I'm going to see what are the results and the differences between the Lightroom rendering and the X-Row Studio from Fuji. So how are we going to export these photos for the X-Row Studio? We just select them all with Command A, Control A, and then I'm going to use Export. Okay, and from this panel, then I'm going to select. I have a preset that's called Original. It's just the meaning that it's going to use as a file setting the original file. So it's just copying the photo out from this folder to another folder. I'm going to use my temp folder and then I'm going to call it this X, uh, X Row Studio. 
okay and then here I have the file I have the file with the XMP I don't need them I can just order by file type and then delete here we are in the Fujifilm X-Row Studio I just opened the folder where we have exported the, the, the photos and I was exporting uh, some photos more, I selected 3-4 photos more and then I'm going to show you why. The first things I'm going to show you on the upper left, you see it's written waiting for the camera connected. It's the meaning that the software is waiting for your uh, Fujifilm X-T2 to be connected. So when uh, I'm just uh, opening the, the camera, is now in this moment connected with uh, USB 3 cable. Okay, as you can see there are some problems, sometimes uh, it's the software was not showing, let's see again, okay, now it's connected back and uh, I want to point out one important thing, at the moment uh, the, you can develop the raw file from the same camera you're using, what is the meaning? That during this last photo session I used both the X Pro 2 and the X-T2. Now we have exported some file uh, like this one here that will shoot with the X-Pro 2 in the studio as you can read here from the information of the, of the camera. But at the moment uh, I cannot develop this file uh, you see it's everything grey out uh, with the X-T2. I will have to connect uh, the X-Pro2 at the moment is not one of the camera that is supported so at the moment I can only work with the RAW file shoot with the X-T2 so let's see a bit the interface of the software so let's look a bit about this left uh, window where we have information about the camera battery level you see I have like the battery grip and same in left battery is now 0% 60% right and body is 100% I can select the folder from we where I'm reading the photos we have the histogram we have also inf image information about the photo shoot Okay, so XT2, I've used the 90 millimeters, and in this case, uh, I was uh, ISO 1600, it was kind of uh, like a, a street bit of dark light, so I uh, raised up a bit the ISO to get a steady shot to get really good uh, sharpness. Then uh, we're going to see for the rest here we have uh, the interface. One annoying thing is we cannot uh, collapse the panel, so we can just uh, drag. Uh, to get more space but we cannot get it smaller the same is for the film strip on the lower side and this is a bit annoying because uh, if you're working with a small screen on the laptop usually you want to have more space in this case we cannot uh, get more room top left here we have a b is meaning we can do before and after comparison when we're going to do some changing in the photo so we're going to see in a moment and then here it's useful because we can see the photo at the full view so it's the meaning that is just in this moment fill the screen with the photo but then we can select different uh, percentual 100% is usually the correct uh, size to check for the sharpness okay, of the photo and then we have this button that is like for getting back to the full view and we can go quickly from uh, full view to 100% uh, clicking on this X, okay? Then we have the usual uh, zoom icon and then the hand. So the hands, you just select the icon and when you are at uh, 100%, uh, let's wait a moment, yeah. Then you can move with the hand uh, around, you can pan the photo, okay? Double click, okay, you can also go back at the fit to screen uh, size and then let's see about the develop here on the right and as you can see here the develop options are the same that you can find in your Fujifilm when you are going to develop the raw file inside the camera so you can push pull the exposure change dynamic range if you shoot something different from 100 change the film simulation this is maybe the most important things add the grain effect, white balance, uh, recover or uh, push more the highlights, uh, shadow tones, push the color, sharpness, noise reduction, 
lens modulation is meaning like correction of the lens, uh, color space, and even if you want to rotate the image. Okay, so let's go to see on this photo. For example, now it applies my Astia. Uh, color that is the same one I'm using uh, always when I'm shooting and if I change to Velvia Vivid as you can see we can get back this red really really strong you're getting of course also more saturation on the skin tone okay let's go to analyze at 100% uh, the photo to see the detail and one thing I want to point out that every modify you are doing so if you're changing again from Astia you have to wait a little seconds or even more than a second to change this so it's not an instant change there is always a bit to wait so the detail is really really amazing okay but I want to point out the detail around here I don't know if you will notice on the compression of the YouTube file even if we are in 4k but it seems a bit look like the JPEG compression, okay? So here you can play, of course, with the different settings. So for instance, we can reduce a bit the sharpness, okay? Instead of plus one, put zero, and reduce the noise reduction. So it's interesting because noise reduction, one thing at zero is not apply. Instead, there are some level that you can go even to minus four, okay? Let's see, if we put on minus four, of course we get more noise but overall we get less of these artifacts that we had before and these artifacts are a bit like the noise reduction and use the same algorithm that we have on the JPEG so it's up to you if you want to have a bit more noise but with more like uh, uniform and also you know Fujifilm is well known for this noise that look a bit more analog than other other camera so you can put this to minus four or you can keep like maybe minus two and get a bit of noise reduction okay but the overall sharpness is really really great so let's try to do a comparison how it is in Lightroom okay so let's go back in Lightroom this is the photo okay we'll go in develop and we're going to zoom in also at 100% okay let's wait one second that the photo is going to be loaded here and as you can see also Honestly, in Lightroom, the results are really good too. So we get, uh, let's see the option on the detail panel. So we have the default uh, settings in which we have uh, no noise reduction. We have 25 on the color uh, noise, okay? And sharpening 25, one, 25, zero. So we can push a bit the sharpening to 35 and radius 09 to get more on the details, okay? and uh, noise reduction of 5, even 10, okay? And let's compare quickly. So this is Lightroom, and this is uh, the X-Row Studio, okay? 1 and 2. So, honestly, there's not this huge, huge difference, okay? And let's check now also the differences about the color. So here, this one is Lightroom, and this one is X-Row Studio. So honestly, maybe X-Row Studio has a little bit deeper uh, colors in the red, the skin tones are also really natural, but also Lightroom uh, with the Fujifilm uh, color profile, they are also really, really good. So I would not say that there are these huge, huge uh, differences, okay? and uh, let's check another photo okay so let's take this other portrait here let's wait a second that is loading for this one let's try to see with the velvia color profile okay velvia is really really strong uh, saturation profile a lot of time i'm not using because it tends to give this strong uh, uh, contrast and saturation on the skin but uh, you know here we are on the Fujifilm uh, X-Row Studio using its own uh, film simulation. So I want to see if it is more natural, okay, in the way of handling. And before I told you, you already have the AB in the upper part where you can compare, as you can see, the before and after, okay? So from the changing you are doing 
uh, as I told before, you can, uh, for instance, uh, a bit uh, uh, rise up the shadow tone. Okay, minus one. You open a bit the shadow. Okay. And then if you want to get more contrast in the highlight, we have to rise up the highlight tone, okay? That's it. And then for instance, uh, we, uh, we can reduce a bit the color to minus one. And uh, nice reduction, we put to minus two, like the photo before, and sharpening to zero, okay? So let's check it out at 100%. Here we are. So as you can see again, the details are really, really good. Uh, and this was shoot with the F2 of the 90 millimeter, the skin uh, and also the, the lips. I love the colors of this uh, the skin and the lips. So overall, it's really, really nice. Okay, and let's see in Lightroom, if uh, we change the photo, I put this one and uh, we apply the Velvia, okay, and then I a bit open the shadow as I did for X-Row Studio and a bit uh, increasing the highlights, okay, so we should get a sort of overall same tone, yeah, as you can see, so also yeah, there's not this huge, huge differences in the color, okay. And uh, the question will be, okay, after you did uh, all this uh, work on the photos, you can export them. The things is really easy. You can do or on the photo itself, you press uh, with the right click and then you have convert, okay? Or then you can do this in a batch convert, so you select uh, just more photos, okay? And uh, you can just uh, convert them here with the button, okay? So if I press convert, uh, is converting these photos in JPEG and they are placing them in the same folder. And also they're opening this JPEG version in the software itself. So you can see then the row with your JPEG close to it, okay? And then if I show you in the finder, here we have the folder with the row. And I want to point out that every file, okay, with the different modify that is called uh, FP1, okay, format with the settings of the modify you did on the file, and then here we have the JPEG that are come out from the row converted. Okay, this is one JPEG, and these are the others one. Okay, so this is it. This is it for the Fujifilm X Row Studio, and I'm going to tell you some other my consideration about this. Uh, first version of the software. As you have seen, honestly, the software has some flaws at the moment, uh, and for me, one of the biggest, uh, probably you noticed, is that it is not so amazing fast. Some seconds to wait on the changing. So, it's not honestly the software that you will use every day to develop your file. Then there is other issues. First things, let's notice that at the moment of this video, December 2017, the software is available only for Macintosh. It's going to come for Windows user at January. Second things, at the moment, still December 2017, it's allowed to use only the camera as the X-T2 with the last update. Fujifilm say that it's going to update firmware for X-Pro2 and the X100F at uh, uh, December. They haven't said when, probably mid of December, end of December, we don't know. I hope it's going to be soon. For me, the third issue that is the biggest is like that when you use the x -Row Studio, you have to use the same camera of the file that you have shoot at. So, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. It's coming to be a lot of more tutorial and a lot of uh, other stuff. Let's keep in touch. Thanks.